Who in this room has ever had an idea? Ever, ever, in your life, ever. Okay, great. When you had the idea, did you go up to someone who maybe you were working for and you went, I've had an idea. Do you know what? This could be so much better. Who's had that moment where you had a thought? You couldn't realise. Like when, they first, when you first started on the farm and they said, here's how we do things around here. Here's how we do it. How many of you thought, you're kidding me? No, 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 no. This is obviously some hazing thing. Ha, 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 you got me. Oh, shit, this is really how they do it. <laughs> Who's seen something so remarkably stupid when they're being told this is how we do it? And you think, Jesus, this is actually how they do it. And then you had an idea and you went back on Monday morning and you kicked open the doors and you said, behold, rejoice, my people. I bring to you a smarter way. It doesn't have to be stupid anymore. And they said, thank God you're here. Finally, you've shown me the inherent stupidity of what I've been done and what my father did and what my grandfather did. Finally, I've realised. Is that the response you get? Let's do it at the count of three, shall we? You're brand new. You've seen a brand new where you go, da-da, and they go, ah. That's been done. That's never been done. I think that covers everything. Now's not a good time. We haven't got the money. Not in this current government. You know it's an election year, don't you? The voters won't go for this. The media will kill us. Here's one I saw from a director of nursing. <sighs> You're new here, aren't you, pet? <laughs> so what do we say? What do we say to the next generation of change agents? We say, come to the industry. Make a difference. But don't change anything. <laughs> Have you seen what that does to intelligent people? Smart passionate, creative people? Have you seen how angry and cynical and jaded they become when they were just fighting against something which they desperately wanted to improve and we said no? Do you recognise this? It turns passionate people into cynics very quickly. And this is basically my life's work, is trying to convince people if you want to improve things, you've got to be prepared to change them. I swear to God, kids, if I knew how to improve it by keeping it the same, that would be the, that would be the title of my speech. It just ain't possible. So. Here's another industry over a similar, similar period of time. It's not mobile phones, it's how we dry our hands. Uh, would you agree there's been change, yes or no? Yes. Has it been largely for the better? Uh, not so sure. Because guess what? It depends on what you mean by better. So unless we've put metrics on this, we can't be empirically sure that there's an improvement. So what are some metrics? What are some things that we could measure to see whether or not this is a quantum leap backwards or forwards? Yes, sir. The drip's blowing up your sleeve. Right. <laughs> the, does, it, does it blow up your sleeve? What else? How many trees, get knocked? How many trees were knocked down? Oh, what else? Speed. Speed. Can, you fit your hands in those? Can you fit your hands in it? <laughs> Will the kiddies get their fingers caught in it? Yes. <laughs> Energy consumption and waste and greenhouse gases and bacteria. bacteria. Thank you. <laughs> I got the numbers on the bacteria. The, we, the uh, University of Westminster in the School of Biosciences in 2008 got 250 doctors to wash their hands, which turned out to be the major achievement of the study. They then, <laughs> who knew? We just had to make it a clinical trial. Then they took little swabs and then they did the little bacteria thing and they went to see how much bacteria do these systems remove. To give you a baseline, the paper towels removed 60% of the bacteria. So that's, that's what we're starting with. So for the McDonald 240 in there to be an improvement, it has to do better than 60% if our idea of better is cleaner. Would you agree? Okay, so just give me a guess. What, uh, what uh, percentage of bacteria do you reckon the one in the middle removes? Just call out, give me a number. 63, 40, I'll give you a hint. It's a round number. It's a very, very round number. <laughs> it is the roundest number there is, zero. And that's the good news. The bad news is it increases the bacteria two and a half times. <laughs> because, and who knew, uh, if, you if you warm up E. coli slowly on wet, damp hands, it grows up to be big and strong. Who knew? So in my book, that's not an innovation. That's what my teenager would call an epic fail, right? <laughs> so what about the sexy Dyson Airblade, the award-winning Dyson Airblade with the HEPA filter? Surely. This has got quantum leap forward. What percentage of bacteria do you reckon it removes? Come on, just call out. 20%? Who said zero? I guess, I'm sorry, the answer is zero. The good news is it only increases the bacteria by 42%. 
well done, but it spreads it for two meters in all directions. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I don't think we're there yet. So this, this kind of, um, this makes the point that better is always different, but different isn't always better. Just because you changed it doesn't mean you made it better. And the reason why I say that, in my world, there's innovation and there's fashion. They're two different things. We changed it because we wanted a better world, a more sustainable, greener, cleaner, fairer, whatever world, or we just changed it because we jazzed up the logo. Don't get fooled by imitations.